My name is Flo and I am cycling across Africa, 13,000 kilometers from Cairo to Cape Town. Welcome back to Project Africa. Cairo to Cape Town, day one. The journey across the continent begins in Egypt, a country that was home to one of the world's most ancient civilizations. Known for its incredible history, culture and food, it's a place I've wanted to see for myself for years. But not just on a one-week rush to vacation. I want to travel through the country. I want to see parts of the country that are not known. I want to meet local Egyptians and not just souvenir sellers. I want to learn how other people live and traveling by bike is the best way to do so. The only problem is that Egypt is known to be one of the worst countries to cycle in, as well as to film in. Why? For three reasons. First, just like a lot of other countries, cycling is not really a common thing here. Some people do ride their bikes, but it's usually out of necessity or it's kids having fun. Second, tourism is everything in Egypt. It's a huge source of income for the country and getting a bad rep could be a disaster. So therefore it is crucial that foreigners have a good and safe time here. And third, Egypt is a military state. The authorities will do everything they can to upkeep the beautiful and positive image of the country. This means keeping a close eye on tourists and ensuring that they have the experience that they want us to have. Stick to the hotels, the beautiful and heavily guarded touristic sites and relax on an Nile cruise. Anyone who dares to deviate from this will be questioned, escorted and stopped. Because according to them, it is not safe. But anyone with a bit of critical sense can understand what's really happening here. And the thing is, that is not the experience that we're looking for. We want adventure. We want to learn how Egyptians live. We want to stop and sleep wherever we want and simply take our time to explore this beautiful country. And to be able to do that, the plan is simple. Avoid the police at all costs and for as long as possible. Now, we just spent a few weeks in Cairo getting all of our paperwork sorted, exploring the ancient wonders of this mega city, and unexpectedly expanding our team of two to a team of six. You see, I'm cycling across Africa with my friend Rob. Then you have the two Italians, Luca and Angelo, who took some time off work to join us in Egypt. Next, you have Tim, who we met last week at the Sudanese embassy. We met a traveler. We have new Tim. friends now. New friends. <laughs> He's a Dutch traveler hitchhiking from Holland to Hong Kong and spontaneously decided to join us cycling across Egypt. He bought an $80 bike called Legend and somehow all of his stuff onto it. And finally, we have Sharif, an Egyptian-American who we met at a birthday dinner just a few days ago. He also loves cycling and he loves snacks. The snack life. All together, we will leave the capital city of Egypt and cycle south along the Nile, all the way to Aswan. Let the adventure begin. Good morning. <laughs> Andrew is in his bed. Luca's getting ready in his cyclist costume. It's 6 in the morning, we're already late. Day one starts. Uh... <laughs> Today's the day. The journey officially begins. We pack up and get our belongings onto the bikes. And as the sun slowly starts to rise, we make our way to the Wadi Degla Protectorate, where some friends from the outdoors community have gathered to send us off. That's it, we're about to start, we're about to embark. We have so many friends and friends of friends that came to send us off. Five, four, three, two, one, go! Let's go! Don't fall! Eat well! Stay hydrated! Cairo to Cape Town, day one. Leaving Cairo, finally. It's been such a hectic couple days, so I'm very excited to be on the road. Cairo is a crazy city. There's so much going on here. Honestly, it's a bit stressful with all the trucks driving past, but so far in Egypt, there's a lot of respect between everyone on the road. So they've been avoiding us and we've had no issues. <laughs> we've been getting a lot of encouragement honks as well. No angry honks so far. <laughs> We're gonna try to reach the Nile and then it's south, all the way south. Today's a very short day, 30 kilometers. We want to get out of the city stress-free and get off the main road as soon as possible. And so we leave the hustle and bustle of chaotic Cairo behind and head towards the calm countryside. And it's just magical. Hello. It's so quiet here. No hawks, no cars. This is a great first day. I'm happy. Coming from Cairo, it feels more mystical, that's, like a bit of paradise. Yeah, that's the burning trash. Don't breathe it in too much. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Indeed, on our way here, we saw piles of burning trash on the side of the road. It was a sad sight and smell. We reach a place called Dahshur, just south of Cairo, right on the edge of the desert, and with a view over its pyramids, two of which are older than the pyramids of Giza. We want to spend the night at a guest house here, but it seems that no one is home. It is 7 p.m. on the first night. Around sunset we went to a guest house, but it was closed and so we're trying to find another place to sleep. We have no idea where it's going to be. 
But yeah, it's really interesting to ride at night. I've never ridden at night before. It's okay now because it's a very desolate road. There's not any cars. It's very quiet and your senses are kind of on high alert because you can't really see anything. And the only thing you can see are the lights in the distance of houses and maybe a car in the distance. We managed to find a small shisha bar that's open and negotiate with the owners to let us sleep here. Then we have some dinner and mint tea before getting settled into the only room they have available here. We're having a sleepover with the boys. With the boys! Yeah, we got Good morning. We got bitten alive by mosquitoes last night. Even despite Rob's attempts of killing all of them, I have mosquito bites all over my hands, my face, all the parts that were showing outside of the sleeping bag. So yeah, today we wake up in a completely different place than yesterday and we don't even know where we're gonna sleep tonight. And that's exciting. We get ready for another day of cycling. The plan is to keep heading south and just have a good day. Angela and Luca decide to ride ahead today. Our trip had a bit of a late start because of the delays with our Sudanese visas. They don't have the stickers for the visas, so it's gonna take like a week probably. And they've been such a blast and really supportive, but we want them to also enjoy the rest of Egypt before going back to Italy. Day two of cycling across Africa. Mmm, you gotta love the smell of burning trash in the morning. Despite the smoke in the air, it's a wonderful morning. The sun rays are beaming through the palm trees and the weather is perfect. It's a pleasant ride. Hello! We ride into one of the villages for some tahmiya, a typical Egyptian breakfast food which consists of a falafel-like fritter made from ground fava beans and herbs which are deep fried and served in bread with fresh salad. I guess they don't see a lot of visitors here, let alone on bikes, as we are immediately surrounded by dozens of kids. Yusuf, Yusuf, Yusuf. What the Yusuf? Ziad, Yusuf. Ahmed, Ahmed. Ahmed? No way. And uh, Yusuf. Ahmed. Muhammad. Mat? Masa? Anta? Ahmed. Ahmed, Ahmed. Muhammad. Ziad. <laughs> Today we decided not to go along the Nile, but take the road that's on the very edge of the agricultural lands, the road that's bordering the desert. And I'm so happy about this decision because there's no one here and the road is really good. We cycle along the irrigation canals for a while. All morning we keep hearing Tfaddal, meaning welcome or join us in Arabic. And eventually we decide to accept the invitation of a family of farmers who invite us over for tea. They seem very curious to meet us as the whole family comes out to say hello. Wow, that's oh. amazing. Mm. Can you ask them if they see cyclists often? Mm. <laughs> 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 wow. My is okay? Nam? Samir. Samia is showing me around the back of the house. I feel very special. She's showing me where they cook, where they prepare the food and stuff. Oh, that's the oven. Aish? Nam? Aish Baladi. This is it. We're in the middle of it. The Lush Nile Valley. The valley of the longest river in the world. It's absolutely stunning. It's just green as far as the eye can see. I look very weird like this with the hat on and the helmet, but it's helping a lot because it's midday and it's very sunny. By the way, if you hear that, that's a pump. Every couple uh, kilometers we see these huge pumps that pump water out of the canals. And here's a donkey. We see lots of donkeys in Egypt as many of the farmers use them as a mode of transportation. We continue riding south and aim for about 60 kilometers, but we also take our time to wave at everyone we see and enjoy the most beautiful green fields I've ever seen. You know, I knew the Nile Valley would be lush and green, but I did not expect it to be this lush and green. We also stop at villages for short breaks where we are inevitably met by all the kids of the village and thanks to Sharif, share snacks while having great conversations. Life is great. 
Around 4 p.m., we spot an imposing structure in the distance. It's the Pyramid of Maidum, one of the forgotten ancient sites of Egypt which few tourists visit, but to me still as magnificent as the ones in Giza. You can see the Pyramid of Maidum in the distance. It looks epic. We decide to ride towards it, because how often do you get to cycle next to a pyramid? We take the desert track and slowly approach the pyramid, and it is truly majestic. This is what I love about biking. You can access places that you can't by car or by foot. We stop for a second to admire this ancient masterpiece and take it in. There is no one else around. Or so we think. Out of nowhere, a police car rushes towards us. The thing we were trying to avoid all this time. They tell us that the site is closed and ask us to leave. So we leave. We cycle away as fast as possible. Because the last thing we want now is the attention of the police. Because that would mean the end of our trip in Egypt. I feel like in a movie, we're trying to escape from the police. Sharif won't have any problems because he's Egyptian. But we're foreigners, so we started cycling while Sharif was speaking to the police. And we're in the nearest streets of the city called Maidum. The next hour is a bit of a blur. We find a lovely family that hosts us for the night. But again, out of nowhere, the police arrives in the evening. Someone must have tipped them off. They force us to put the bikes in their truck. And while at it, cause a massive scene as the whole neighborhood comes out to see what is going on. I don't know what's happening. We're in a police car with all our bikes. There's a million kids outside. Hello. What the hell? Rob, can you explain? Basically what happened was that we went to the pyramids. There was the police there. It's not the police that is responsible for the safety of foreigners. But they warned that police. And so uh, when they stopped us and they started talking to Sharif, we fled, literally. And what happened was that they came until here because they want to bring us to like a hotel that they know. And we have to pay. This whole scene didn't help into thinking that it's a safe place for us to But it was here. so safe before. It was safe, I know it's safe. It was so Most so of nice. Egypt is safe. The, the, the scene was caused because of the police. I know. That's the thing. Yeah. That's it. It was game over. We knew it was only a matter of time, but now we had been found by the police. From now on, they will want to stop us, escort us, to control us. They will not leave us out of sight, and we won't have the freedom that we had these last two days. Hey, Phil. Hi. <laughs> I, I I can't believe this. This is the pyramid of my doom. And we are currently in a police car because we're being escorted to find Rob's selfie stick in the sand. And I'm currently in the car with all of our bikes. This, I could not make this up. You guys, I could not make this up. This is only day two of our Cairo to Cape Town cycling trip. It's only day two, man. I feel like I'm living in a dream right now. Like there's no way this is actually happening. I'm a bit concerned though because I feel like we will not be allowed to cycle and I don't want to return to Cairo and take the train down like this is not an So now that our plan A, avoid the police, has failed, we turn to plan B, embrace the police. Have a good time and keep riding south no matter what. And we have a